Madam President, I rise today to discuss the protests we've seen erupt in Cuba over the past several days. On Sunday, shouts of libertad, freedom, were heard in dozens of cities and towns all over Cuba as people took to the streets to protest the communist government that has had a stranglehold on that nation for 62 years. This socialist regime has tortured, killed, silenced, denied freedom, and driven into exile generations of Cubans, forcing many, including my family, to flee or to be murdered. It has cut off Cuba from the rest of the world. It has destroyed its economy so that today Cubans stand in long lines for food, for medicine, for basic supplies. They endure energy blackouts. And government officials can shut off their censored internet service at a whim. As they did Sunday, when the regime panicked about the protests. This battle for freedom is personal to me. When Fulgencio Batista staged a coup in Cuba and became a brutal dictator in the 1950s, my father fought against his regime. My dad was imprisoned and tortured. His captors broke his nose and bashed in his front teeth so they were dangling from his mouth. My father fled Cuba, the country he had fought for and had been brutalized trying to save. And in 1957, my father came to the United States. He came to Texas with $100 sewn into his underwear. He had nothing. He attended the University of Texas on a student visa and got a job washing dishes making 50 cents an hour. In the summer of 1959, soon after Castro had taken over Cuba, my father returned to visit his family, and he was horrified by what he saw. It quickly became evident that Castro was even worse than Batista had been. My father's sister, my tia Sonia, was still there, and she became part of the counter-revolution against Castro. Like her brother, my tia Sonia was thrown in prison and she was tortured by Castro's goons. Growing up, my cousin Bibi and I used to sit at the feet of my dad and my tia Sonia and hear stories about their fight for freedom, hear their stories about battling in Cuba just like the heroic protesters on the streets are doing today. The freedom of America was the dream that allowed them to endure the brutality of Cuba. America was and is a beacon of hope for all of those who, like them, have endured oppression. And that is why we saw so many protesters in Cuba flying American flags on Sunday because the American flag is a symbol of hope in Havana, in Hong Kong, and all across the globe. America must respond. Over the past few days, the world has seen that the American people, we stand squarely with the men and women of Cuba in their noble fight for liberty. Worryingly, however, the Biden administration has stopped short of strong, clear support for the brave protesters marching in the street and has been reluctant to issue clear and unequivocal condemnation for the communist dictatorship that oppresses those people. In statement after statement, as protesters swept into the streets, literally risking their lives to stand for freedom, administration officials have issued lukewarm and guarded statements. After being shamed into finally taking stronger positions, President Biden finally put out a statement saying that the protesters were exercising their right to peaceful, peaceful assembly. 
But even that is wrong. In Cuba, they have no right to peaceful assembly because the Cuban dictatorship is out there arresting the protesters right now. It's out there beating the protesters right now. It's out there imprisoning the protesters right now. They are speaking with great courage and the communist dictatorship is doing everything it can to silence what they're saying. The Biden administration has also said the protests are about COVID-19 vaccines. That unfortunately doesn't even pass the laugh test. Just this week, the White House press secretary said the protests were about misadministration in Cuba, mismanagement. Well, the last I checked, the protesters in the streets weren't chanting, manage better. They were chanting libertad, freedom. They were chanting down with the dictatorship. I want to close by reading a text that I got this week from my mom. My mom and our family is in communication with family friends still in Cuba. Here's what a close friend of the family said. Things are much more serious than what is reported on TV. This friend of the family described that she has no food. Same for almost everyone. Yesterday she had a bowl of thin soup, nothing more. She was asking for help for the first time. No way to get money to Cuba. Banks are closed. Five protesters were killed in Santiago. Radio stations are being taken over by protesters. Internet shut down, so no further contact available. Thousands taking the street of Havana and at least 14 other cities in protest over the weekend, demanding an end to the 62-year dictatorship and protesting the lack of food and COVID vaccines. They were the biggest protests in decades in a country with tight police control and surveillance on dissidents. Demonstrators attempted to broadcast the protests live with their cell phones, but Cuba's authorities cut Internet service on multiple occasions. Yesterday, NBC News reported that streets of Havana were quiet overnight and there was a heavy military and police presence. There were also pro-government groups in the streets in sections of the city where protesters clashed with the police earlier yesterday. And the eyes of the world are on Cuba. The world now can see clearly the true face of the Cuban government.